If drawing has been frustrating you, you're in the right place. I have a secret weapon that gives me the most consistent and exciting results. And it's a simple pen, the brush pen. Brush pens are just that, pens with a real brush head. So it's a lot like if you were to sketch with a paintbrush, but without the annoyance of having to reload all the time. Brush pens give you a ton of power when it comes to line quality and immediacy. Because of the flexible brush tip, you can get thick and thin lines effortlessly. And because of all the character that you can build into your illustration, just by pressing down or lifting up, you get that sense of immediate gratification and immediate personality in everything you draw. Today I'm looking at four different pens, and don't worry, we're gonna sketch two. And I'm always after the best brush pen, and I'm always changing my mind. These four are really interesting. First up, I'm trying the Faber-Castell Pit Pen. And what I noticed first about this one is that it doesn't come to a strong detailed point. And as I expected, the marks that I can make with this one are limited. It also has a really stiff brush tip, and that means I'm not gonna get those thick and thin lines as easily, or at all, as you can see. Next up is the Bemoji Bristle Tip Brush Pen. And friends, I don't know if I'm getting these names right, but I'm trying. And if you think this one's looking a lot like a Japanese bamboo brush, you would be right. It was designed after that exactly. It even has the little hanging loop on the end. It's definitely got a finer point, but as you can see, it makes thin marks, but they're not the thinnest they could be. And I'm always looking for that pen that goes from super thick to super thin all in one stroke. And the other thing I'm noticing is that when I do apply the full pressure to this one, I get a lot of texture, a lot of dry brush effect, which isn't my favorite all the time. Next up, we have the Kiritake AI Liner Super Fine Brush Pen, and oh my gosh, super fine indeed. And look at what this pen can do. It can go from super fine, like eyelash fine, to a beautiful thick mark effortlessly. I know I'm loving this one. I think it might be my favorite, but let's see what the last one can do. Lastly is the, and I know I'm gonna screw this name up, the Gazin Feud Brush Pen from Copic. It's got a nice fine point, so I'm definitely feeling positive. It seems to be pretty flexible, and so let's see how it does. I'm getting a lot of nice lines out of this. The thick lines are still producing that kind of textural effect, the dry brush, which I don't always love. And what I really loved about the previous pen, the AI from Kiritake, was that when I pressed down, I was able to get a full coverage mark, no texture lines, and that made me really happy. All right, the winner here for me, friends, is definitely the Kiritake AI pen. Oh my gosh, I love this thing. Now, it definitely would need to be paired up with a pen that could make an even thicker mark, so I'd probably go with the Copic, but for today's drawing exercise, I'm just gonna go with the Kiritake AI. Let's get into it. Today I'm using hot press watercolor paper from Academy. It's got a nice smooth texture that'll allow this marker to really glide along the surface. I'm working from a clipping of a flowering succulent from my patio, and I'm gonna have a photo of this for you to work from linked below. Starting at the base of this teardrop shape and going upwards to a point, and I've created a very wonky teardrop going right next to it and creating another wonky teardrop that meets at the top point. Notice how I'm curling out to the side a little bit. It looks a little weird right now, I get that. Basically what you wanna think about is this flower shape is a collection of teardrop shapes that are overlapping one another. And even the little leaves, they're also overlapping one another. The good news is that it's going to be hard to make these little flowers not look like these little flowers, even if you approach it very differently from how I am right now. So you can see the little leaves at the base of this flower starting to emerge. I'm adding the third one there on the left-hand side. And I'm just gonna keep going as it feels good. Notice where my lines are thinner. That's where I'm easing up on the pressure a bit. All right, getting into the next flower, I'm starting at the base with all the little leaves. And this flower is kind of facing away from me, so I'm seeing the butt end of the flower, so to speak. 
And now coming out from that base, that wide base, and starting to create those teardrop shapes that collect together at one point. So you see there's one teardrop on the bottom, one teardrop on the top, and they're connecting where all of the leaves come together at the butt of the flower. I just like saying butt of the flower, you're gonna have to forgive me. And then connect it with a small stem. If you're feeling nervous at this point, I would say take a break from what you're working on and go onto a scratch piece of paper and just play with your, your pen or your brush or your marker, whatever you're using, and make some marks, loosen up your hands, stretch your hands. I talk about muscle memory. Well, stretching your hands can actually make your hands more ready to create these shapes and use your pencils, pens, whatever they may be. I'm glancing back at my inspiration cutting here and I do kind of want to create this long stem kind of feel and so I'm continuing that stem down from where it started in the first flower down to touch the second flower making some connecting leaves that connect the stem with everything else that's going on. Leaves are a great equalizer, a great connector. So you can add leaves into any part of your composition when you're feeling like things are looking a little disconnected. And now I've got that third smallest flower at the base of this sprig, vine, whatever you wanna call it. And really that flower was just a collection of two teardrop shapes connected at the base by a few leaves. And that's it. You'll notice that I sometimes kind of draw backwards. I'll start in a white space, a white area with just a random leaf that looks like it's floating. That's kind of just the way my brain works. Sometimes a particular part of an inspiration photo will catch my eye like a really perfectly shaped leaf. And I will draw that first in the place that I think it's gonna go and then try to fit everything else around it like puzzle pieces. But for you, it might feel better to just draw continuously. Finish one area, connect it to the next area, connect it to a stem, then connect that stem to another small stem and so on and so forth. So you do you, boo. Taking a step back here, I'm really enjoying this composition so far. Yes, it's floating on the page. It's gonna stay floating on the page and I'm okay with that. There is a nice variety of size and there's a really beautiful variety of shape. All the different shapes of the leaves that I've added, especially connecting directly to the stem, have really given this composition a lot of interest and personality. So while the flowers or the buds are the key players, it's where your eye goes first, they're the largest shapes, those small leaves, those simply shaped but small leaves done in a variety of ways. Some have rounded edges, some have fatter bellies, some have thin pointy ends. When you use that variety, your supporting elements in your drawing can be what gives everything gorgeous personality. Now, obviously I'm not giving you exact instruction on how to craft and create each shape that I am adding to the page here. The point is I want you to start to develop some confidence with building your own shapes. We've got a series of teardrops and a series of ovals and those teardrops and ovals throughout this illustration are being edited to each have their own personality and fit into the overall puzzle that is this illustration. So get your basic shapes down, get the basic direction of your vine or branch or whatever it may be down and then you construct from there. Follow your inspiration image exactly if you want to, but also know that you can build this imaginary little world of your own once you are confident with making these different shapes. Let's get into some watercolor though. I actually love the fact that all of these pens that I tried out today are water resistant. So good, all right. Spraying down my palette, my brush is clean but damp and I picked up a little bit of fluorescent yellow and added it to three different places. Quickly, I'm going in with the peach. There might be a little pink on my brush too and adding that to the base of those flowers where I added the yellow underneath the yellow and letting things kind of run together on their own, giving the, the friction on the paper, giving things a little bit of help, but not over brushing or over working. And to this point, everything is wet on dry. My brush is actually, I would say it's closer to damp on dry than wet on dry, somewhere in between damp and wet on dry. And if you're like, oh my gosh, what are you talking about? 
I'm gonna link the video below where you learn all about water control on your brush. It's a big one, it's so important. Rinsing my brush now, and I'm adding my favorite, favorite olive green from this palette. Going ahead along certain parts of the vine, certain bits of the flower, and the point here, friends, I've decided when I first touched down that paint to the paper, I decided I wasn't going to fill in everything perfectly. I'm gonna be leaving some white areas. I just want this to be fresh and immediate and clean and get in, get out, get done. After I'm adding some of the olive green, I'm going in with a clean brush and blending out with a little bit of water. Now I've got a little bit of the emerald green, a little bit of blue on my brush, and I'm just adding a few more brush strokes here and there for a little bit of depth, but not overdoing it. Again, I don't wanna fill every last little spot in. Ah, uh, this is a great point in your illustration. You may be feeling frustrated, friends, and I'm here for you if you are, because this is what I want you to do. If at this point you've made it this far, you decided to continue on, add some watercolor to what you've done, but you're not feeling it. You're feeling like it's awkward or it's not convincing. I want you right now to stop and take a look and find at least one spot in your illustration that you're happy with. Okay, go ahead. Do it. I'll wait. It's important for you to be able to recognize even the smallest areas that have been successful in your artwork. Because when you're able to learn and build the habit of being kind to yourself along this art journey, you're gonna win and feel successful a lot more often. And I need you to watch this video on that topic exactly. I'm gonna teach you how to be kind to yourself again and again. And until next time, friends, I wish you so much happy painting.